On today's video I'm going to show you how you can improve your frames per second and your game performance only making some small fixes onto the NVIDIA control panel. Don't can think though that this is going to be especially made for NVIDIA graphic cards but if you're running an AMD system you're going to find pretty similar options so you can test them out. And stay tuned into the end of the video so you can see some benchmarks about the improvements that you are going to do with this setting. The first thing that I want you guys to do is to update your driver. For this you can go into the NVIDIA website and download it from there or you can install a program which I recommend that is the G4 experience. So when you open the program up you're going to see this, you're going to see the games that you have installed for example and here is the drivers. As you can see I already have the latest driver installed into my system. When you do this, you're going to have two options. One of them is going to be to make a normal installation and the second one is to make a custom installation. I recommend you guys that you use the custom installation because in there you can set up to make a clean installation that is going to remove the old drivers and install the new one. It's always a good option to do because you don't know if you are going to have problems with the old drivers, so I always recommend to remove them before. When you have your drivers up to date, the second thing that I want you guys to do is to go into your taskbar show all your hidden icons and you see all of this right here this also can stop your performance so let's close everything that you don't really need to have open while you're gaming for example gopro quick take it out you are also going to find that a lot of time these stores where you buy your games are going to have the launchers open as start of the computer so and they also take a lot of power from your machine so also be sure to close them off when you don't need them now when you have all of this, let's jump right into the NVIDIA control panel. For that all you have to do is to right click on your desktop and go into the NVIDIA control panel. The first thing that you're going to see is the adjust image settings with preview. Normally I only recommend to leave it like it is, you don't really need to change nothing there, it's fine like this. Now let's go into manage 3D settings below, here is when you can really change a lot of things to improve your performance in games. Some of the settings you don't have to mess up, but just in case you have it a little bit different in your PC, I'm going to go all over them. Image sharpening. Be sure that sharpening is off and scaling disabled. Ambient occlusion. This is where you want to change it from off, performance or quality. I recommend you guys to choose performance. It's going to give you this quality, but especially if you're going to be playing competitive games like Under Strike, for example. But if you're really into RPG games and more into single player games, you can choose quality, maybe you can see a little bit better quality in your games. I have not seen too much of a difference, if I tell you the truth, guys, so I will choose off or performance. An isotropic filtering, leave it an application controller. The application, the games that you're going to be running is going to control how this is done. Uh, Anti-aliasing, FXAA, off. Anti-aliasing, gamma correction, leave it in on. Anti-aliasing mode, application control. So here inside of your game, in the settings, you are going to choose how the anti-aliasing is going to be. So I would recommend it leave it like this. Anti-aliasing transparency off, CUDA GPUs. Here you want to be sure that it's selected all and that your GPU is shown right here and the checkbox is marked. Click OK. DSL factors off. Low latency mode. Here is something where you can play off. Uh, to tell you the truth guys, I have seen that in off is what works best for me. You can put it in on, but I have a lot of tearing and problems and also in ultra. But play a little bit with these settings and check them out for yourself. Max frame rate, let's leave it in off. Maybe sometimes if you have a PC that can play too much frames, you want to set up a limit because if your panel doesn't have any variable refresh rate, you can see a lot of tearing. But normally I don't know nobody that use it and leave it in off is the better thing to do. Monitor technology, G-Sync. This all depends if you have a G-Sync panel, a freezing panel or without any of those, fixes refresh rate. I use a G-Sync panel, so I'm going to choose G-Sync. Multi-frame sample AA, leave it in off. OpenGL, rendering GPU. Auto select, you don't want this, you want to change it to the graphic card that you're using, in my case the RTX 2080. Be sure that your graphic card is selected right there. Now, into power, management mode, 
you want to change this right here, from optimal power all the way to prefer maximum performance. This is probably going to increase a little bit your idle temps, but this is one of the settings that is mostly going to improve your frame rates on gaming. So I will really recommend to everybody to have it in perfect maximum performance. Prefer refresh rate, of course, highest available, shader cache leave it in on, texture filter, leave it in off, texture filter in negative LOD bias, leave it in allow. This is also going to improve a little bit more your frames. Texture filtering quality. I will recommend right here also to put it into high performance. But again, guys, depending on the games that you are playing and what you want to achieve, if you cannot get with higher quality the frames that you wish for, then set it into high performance. But if you play more, like I said before, more role playing games or single player games, you can put it in quality or high quality. You're going to maybe you're going to see a little bit more details in the textures, but mostly with high performance, I find it fine. Now, texture filter, and three linear optimization, leave it in on. Threaded optimization in auto. This works perfectly like this. Triple buffering in off. I don't know when you want to use this. Uh, vertical sync. Use the 3D application setting. So again, guys, in your game, in your program, you're going to choose if you want to use the vertical sync, that is G-Sync or FreeSync, on or off. And this part right here about virtual reality, we are not going to touch it right now. It's perfect like this. You can leave it. Now let's go into configuration for our physics. Yeah, apply the changes. Now be sure that in your physics settings, the processor is set to your graphic card. Most games already are going to make it in your graphic cards, but some of them can use the CPU. You can try out a little bit what works best for you, but what I have found is that for me to choose in here, the graphic card is the best setting. Now let's go in under display resolution. Right here is something really important. Sometimes the refresh rate from your monitor is not going to be in the maximal that you want. Sometimes by default, it's going to be in a lower refresh rate of what your monitor can do. So you want to be sure that your monitor, for example, I have both of them, that both are on the highest refresh rate available from that monitor. Color settings, you don't really need to change nothing here. Also in rotate display, at least that you are using another display in portrait mode, but anything else, yes. Into, into adjust text of size and position, I will recommend that you use full screen and that you choose performance scaling on the GPU and that you check the mark where say override the scaling mode set by games and programs because lots of times games by default are going to be in another resolution of what your monitor can do natively. So if you want that they always play at the native resolution on your monitor, choose override the scaling mode set by games and programs right here. Here you can set up G-Sync, like I said before, one of my panels, this one is G-Sync capable, the other one isn't, but this is my ultra-wide monitor, it's the one that I use mostly for gaming. And that is pretty much it for all the settings that you have to do in the video control panel. Now, guys, I'm going to show you some benchmarks about the difference of before and after you do all of these settings. Thanks for watching guys, if you find the video helpful, don't forget to leave a like and a subscriber will also really help the channel out. Leave me in the comments down below if these settings have helped you out with your games to increase performance. And like always my friends, see you on the next time, bye bye.